Hello everybody, Natalia here. Today is March 15th, which means we are just a little bit over two weeks away from the start of Camp NaNoWriMo. So what I plan to do is start uploading kind of Camp NaNoWriMo tips and trick videos. Uh, also, if you have any requests for me, please let me know in the comments down below so that I can make sure to make those videos for you. So today, for the first Camp Nano tip, I'm going to be talking all about creating a calendar for your project so that you can stay on task while you're working through the month of April. All right, let's get started. So I am somebody that likes to be extremely organized when I am working on a project. I am also somebody that likes to make to-do lists and create little boxes just so that I can check them off. There's something very like fulfilling about checking off a box or striking something out that you had to do that day. So these calendars work really well for me because I'm always excited to come back to it at the end of the day and fill it out. So April has 30 days. So you wanna make sure that you have those days all laid out on your calendar. And what I do on each of those 30 days is I put a goal word count and then I put my actual word count that I reach that day. I am aiming for 20,000 words in April, which means I need to write about 667 words per day. So for the goal word count on day one, on April 1st, I would put 667. And then under that, in the spot that says actual, I would write how many words I wrote that day. And then it just continues throughout the month of April. And then on top of that, what I like to do uh, to kind of keep myself motivated is if I hit my word count that day, I like to shade the box in green or give myself a little star or a check mark. And then if I do not hit my word count for that day, I shade the box in red or I give myself a sad face or an X. So those symbols and colors just motivate me to hit my word count every day because I don't like seeing a bunch of boxes shaded in red or a bunch of sad faces and X's all over my calendar. I'd much rather see happy faces and stars and green shaded in boxes to know that I am right on track. So that helps me a lot. The next thing I include on my calendars is special events. Now, these could be special events such as events that your cabin is hosting, or if this was me creating my calendar, I would put on there the days that I do my Write With Me episodes. I film one of those every Saturday, unless I'm going to be out of town like I will this weekend, and then I will be filming it on Friday. Um, and that's incredibly important to me because I get a lot of words written on those write with me days. So I would definitely want to have those written into my calendar just to make sure that I'm keeping up with those videos. Um, or perhaps there are days that you're going to participate in a virtual write-in or you're going to be taking part in a bunch of sprints through Camp Nano or Twitter or any other kind of platform that hosts them. Um, those are really good to add to your calendar just so that you know that it's coming up, you're excited about it, and you don't miss it. The other things I like to include on my calendar are images and quotes. Now, I really like images because I am a very visual person, so I like to put pictures on the calendar that inspire me or that are kind of aesthetics for what I am working on during that month. I have already created my calendar, which I will be showing you after this initial segment. So you'll be able to see how mine turned out and you'll be able to see the images that I'm kind of talking about. Um, the other thing that's really nice is to include quotes on your calendar, just so that if you're feeling kind of down and out that day, or if you're feeling like you're struggling to get words on the page, sometimes just reading those quotes can really, really help you get through that and start working. And then the last tip when it comes to your calendar is to either print it out or set it as your desktop background when you're finished with it. And this way, you're looking at it all the time. It's not something that you create and then save in the hundreds of files and documents that are already on your computer because it, there's no guarantee that you're even going to remember and open it again. So I always like to use mine as the desktop background. And then at the end of the day, I will go back to the file, you know, update it, fix it up with the actual word count I hit that day, and then just reset it as a desktop background, so it's constantly being updated as I am writing throughout the month of April. All right, so those were kind of my tips for calendar creation, and now I am going to go ahead and show you a few sample calendars that I went ahead and created. Um, I ended up using the old version of Microsoft Word for this, so that any of you that have the old version can kind of see how I played with the features of it to make a decent calendar 
but the calendar I created for myself was made on a newer version of Microsoft Word, and I'm going to show you that as well. So no matter what version of Microsoft Word you have, you can make some calendars that are going to work for you and that are going to inspire you. So all right, let's go ahead and get started with these calendar samples. So Microsoft Word has calendar templates and you can search for calendar and then choose the template that will be best suited for your project. So there are three different sample calendars that I'm going to be showing you today. This first calendar sample that I'm going to show you is going to be extremely simple. The first change I made was to align the dates on the right side of each box and then I'm going to fill each box with sections for my goal word count and my actual word count. Next, I'm going to have some fun experimenting with colors. I like to choose colors that remind me of my book's theme. Next, I'm going to fill in a goal word count. You can also do this for hours, pages, chapters, etc. You can also change the color of the calendar itself. I went ahead and made a few more changes just to make the calendar look a bit more unique. As you can see, this is an extremely simple calendar, but it'll do the job. This next calendar is going to be highly visual, which I really like the look of. After fixing the wacky dates, I'm going to start adding images that inspire me. For this calendar, I'm going to use some character artwork. Next up, I'm adding my word count goal, daily word count goal, and any other notes or quotes that will help me throughout April. I further personalize this calendar by adding more images and notes for myself. The only downside to this calendar is that there is no room to track your progress with your goal word count and actual word count. This next calendar I'm going to show you is simple and colorful. It has room to add your goal word count and actual word count to each box and has a simple sidebar where you can add images, notes, and reminders for yourself. This is probably my favorite of the three sample calendars I made. Now this is the calendar that I made for myself. I used a color scheme that fits the mood of the novel as well as images that inspire me. I really like how it turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a little bit more about calendar creation and have some ideas about your own calendar. If you create a calendar, I would love to see it. So please send me a link or send me a message with the file attached. I would just love to see what you have created. Uh, again, I am going to be making more of these videos, so if you have any requests, please let me know in the comments down below so that I can start filming those videos for you. Like I said, we're just over two weeks out and I'm really excited to get started this Camp NaNoWriMo and I am so glad that all of you are going to be doing this with me and we can support each other and it's just going to be an amazing time. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to catch you in my next video. Bye!